Hi everyone, this is God's Girl G and thank you so much for joining me today. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And for those of you who are returning to this channel to watch this video and you're not already subscribed, I am gonna encourage you to do so by clicking the subscribe icon below. And if during the course of this video, you hear something that you like, I'm gonna ask you to click the thumbs up icon, comment below, or better yet, share this video with someone who you feel could benefit from this information. With that stated, let's get into today's discussion. I have spoken to many single people who have told me they don't like the games that come with the dating world. Well, the reality is dating is a game and it's a part of our societal norms. So whether you're a single person who chooses to play the game or not, the dating game is being played with or without your cooperation. Dating, much like a board game, is made up of rules and do's or don'ts that are crucial to society's version of the dating process. Many times when people say they don't like the dating game, they're really referencing the dating mind games people play to win someone over. These mind games are also used to manipulate others, spare potential harm on their part, potential humiliation or rejection, and avoid vulnerability. So there's many reasons why people play these mind games. And although these dating mind games may protect the precious ego, they do nothing but damage any potential for a lasting relationship. More importantly, they usually hurt both parties involved. There are a number of reasons why people play these dating mind games, and I just named a few. But the goal is usually centered around gaining power and control over another person. Usually when we try to use someone to make us feel better, it doesn't end well. It's almost impossible to create an authentic relationship or a connection with someone when honest communication is missing. Now, authenticity is important so that you're not communicating incorrect information about who you are. Now, we've heard that one before on another video. Now, this is a good time to point out that there are also good dating games or as I call it, rules of the road. So it's not just bad dating games. There are some good dating games too. Now, when I reference good dating games, Again, it's more in my mind of the rules of the road. Games in the terms of rules and norms that are a part of life that everyone should adhere to. There are things that you should and should not do when dating, period. Now there are societal norms and there are, I guess you would call it religious norms when it comes to dating. But sadly in the world of Christianity, mm, we are often confused about which norms or rules people are grounded in when dating. But outside of that, there are people, just like you would play in a board game, that do try to cheat the system and they don't abide by the rules. Those are the ones you need to watch out for. So now I'm gonna talk about the good type of dating games and the bad type of dating games. Now the good type of dating games, I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail with because those are the good ones. It's the bad ones that I wanna expound upon. So here we go. The good types of dating games. Thinking twice about what you text to other people so you're always putting your best foot forward. That's a good game. Being thoughtful about the time spent together. Making the other person invest in the relationship as much as you are. And failing to entertain bad behavior. Those right there, that's th those are good games. Those are good rules to abide by. So now let's get into the bad ones. Now, dating games are a bad situation in any of these little scenarios. The mind games that people play or the dating game that people play that only benefits them, not good. The games that are actively damaging to you or to the other person. 
when you don't allow someone to get to know the real you because there's way too many games that you're playing. And the last big bucket, when it's all games and little substance. In other words, they all talk, no action. So now let's get into some specifics. I want to point out six games that people who play mind games are up to that you need to make sure you watch out for. Game one, the on and off game. The on is showing interest first. The off is shortly thereafter switching to disinterested for no reason. Now, some of you might call this ghosting or mixed signals, and I did two videos that covers both of those topics, but this is slightly different, especially it's different from ghosting. This is where they show false disinterest. Let me break it down. They show a false disinterest to get your attention. They do this to control the relationship or they do it as a test to see what your reaction may be. At the end of the day, what they're after, they want you to put in more energy than they will because they're interested, but they're busy with other prospects. They just wanna keep you as a prospect. Here's what you should know about this game. Never consider anything real until it's real. Game two the adventurer game. This game is played by a person presenting themselves as this just globe-trotting adventurer, traveler, or any sort of label that evokes excitement and being adventuresome. Here's what you should know. This game works really well in online dating. Now, if they were really adventuresome, they wouldn't have to advertise it, y'all. Don't fall for it. Game three. The disqualified game. This game works when they work to disqualify you or even their self from any potential relationship. The goal is to really tell you indirectly, you're not their type. They want to pique your interest and have you chase after them since they won't because you're just not their type. The idea here is that people want usually what they can't have. And so by writing you off or pretending that they're not interested or they disqualify you, it puts them in that position of being someone that is wanted. This one can be a little tricky. So I'm gonna give you an example on this one. They may say, well, I've dated someone who was super religious or super into their you know, relationship with God before and it just didn't work out because they just, they just spent too much time at church. That's kind of usually how they look at that. So then it gets you in the position of trying to, no, 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 I'm interested. I can do this. I can have fun. I can, I can go out. It gets you into this position of being on the defense where you then go chasing after them to show that you're worthy. Here's what you need to know. Don't fall for it. Move on. They playing games. Game four, we are so alike game. This is a game where they fake interest in the interests that you have. Seeking to be your dream date. And as a side note, please don't use this to think that all chemistry that you have to, with someone or things that you do have in common is a part of this game because it's not. So I'm gonna try to break this one down a little further. The way that you can tell if they play in this we're so alike game is just watch their actions. Make sure that what they're saying matches what they're doing. If they say they like chocolate cake cause you like chocolate cake and every time y'all go to a restaurant or go get a dessert, they order a donut when there's this decadent chocolate cake there and this place is known for it. Houston, there's a problem. They play in a game, y'all. Game five, the labeling game or the rush game. Let me explain. This is an emotionally dangerous game that people play. They will give you a label like girlfriend, fiance, boo, shubidoo, whatever you want to call it, they give you a label to give you what you want as quickly as possible to move the dating process along so they can get what they want. 
So here's what you need to know. Get their past relationship history. Just ask them to talk. And if they've got a pattern of rushing into things, red alert, danger. Don't go there. And don't let somebody rush you into a committed relationship before you're ready. Take your time. Game six, the lowering your self-esteem game. Now, this is a common mind game. The goal is to make you believe that you can't measure up to what they're wanting or their expectations or their desire in a dating partner or relationship. Now, you might hear things like, my last girlfriend or boyfriend never had a problem with such and such. Or, no one else seems to care about this. I don't understand what your problem is. Maybe you're a little paranoid. Now, this is the adult version of peer pressure. I'm just saying. And it's designed to get you to do something that you really don't want to do. The idea here is to lower your self-esteem and make you chase after them and regain their approval. Now, here's what you need to know about this game. This is a game right here you should take very seriously. Low self-esteem leads to a pattern of self-destructive behavior. This game is the hallmark game of an abusive person. And if you get into a relationship with them, we'll only give you one thing, an abusive relationship. I'm just saying. Now, if you're watching this video and you find yourself in the category of playing mind games, clean it up. You're making dating much harder, not only on yourself, but harder on other people that you're trying to get involved with. You're ruining your chances of finding someone special. Now, I get it. Dating can be very intimidating. It can also be tough to figure out the games that people are playing. Are they a good game? Are they a bad game? You're just trying to figure all that out. I get it. And I know you don't want to play games, and that's okay. But it's important to note that some of the people that you may date are playing games whether you want to play the game or not. Now, you don't have to play the game, but you do need to be aware of the games that are out there. Ultimately, there is a way to date authentically. Whether someone's playing a game or not, just be who you are. Because in order to find real love, you do have to present the real you. Thank you for joining me today. And don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Bye.